Good day, good day. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Jay, and this is Homeschool Your Kids Podcast. And today, we have Miss LaToya. Introduce yourself. Thank you, Jay. So I am LaToya Germain. I'm from New York City, and I'm a homeschooling mom of four girls, ranging from 21 down to seven. So technically, not really homeschooling the older ones, but I started out homeschooling them a few years ago. So that's the basics about me. What else? <laughs> that's the basics. <laughs> that's the basics. <laughs> what else you well, want? Um, I mean, you know, you you know what you went to. Like you have a different lifestyle. Um, tell you can tell us something about your business that you got going on and everything. So, like you said, um, a different kind of lifestyle. Yes. Um I'm absolutely stepping into a different kind of lifestyle for the last few years. And some parts of it have been gradual and other parts have been really abrupt because the lifestyle that I came from is very traditional. Like most people, I was in school most of my life, pretty much high school, college, more college, got a job, work my job, work my job, work my job, work my job <laughs> <laughs> for years. And, um, not really making progress in any way besides progressing through time, I would say, because relationships mm. are not improving. Actually, relationships were suffering within my family. Uh, financially, we were suffering. Uh, emotionally, I would say, we, you know, people, I wasn't mm. fulfilled in any way, really. Um, but my bills were paid. And my, when I say suffering, for example, my oldest daughter, she was the first one I pulled out of school. And that was in like 2017 or 18 when she was in 10th or 11th grade. It's all like a past life now. So when I look back, <laughs> it's almost like I'm right. telling someone else's story. I was there, but it, it's so different now because when I first decided to pull her out of school, it was because she started to um, struggle around sixth grade when she moved to the school where I actually taught which was a six through 12 public school in New York city. And it was also the same school I had attended as a student. My husband attended. It was a, oh, a wow. central in our neighborhood. It was, you know, it's a big part of our community. So when I brought my daughter there, I was bringing her there in the expectation that she would have a positive experience. I had at that point, I'm still very grateful for my own experience at that school. Mm -hmm. So when I brought her there, I'm thinking like, I'm bringing her into a family. Like that was my thinking. I'm like, some of my coworkers taught me when I was a kid, you know, a lot of my, oh, coworkers, wow. I've, been, I've been working there for years. So they know me, they know, you know, they know me. So when I brought my daughter there, I was expecting her to have a similarly positive experience. And it was actually the opposite. There have been a mm. lot of changes in um, administration throughout the years, including like that first year we brought her to, like, there was a new principal. They made some legislative changes, maybe that, that just changed the whole culture of the building and not the best way. Like the kids were mm. pretty much wild running the hallways, not, there wasn't much order. And my daughter who during elementary school, she was one of those, like a star student. I never had an issue. I would go to the meetings. I'd be like, Oh, you already know she's top of the class. She always does blah, blah, blah. So she was good until she got to middle school and she had never been in an environment with these types of people, you know, children who have been put out of other schools for behavioral issues were now being sent to this school, like, you know, like a, a transfer. So she was in an environment, which, you know, if you know, any 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds, they, they like all in the chaos. So she was enjoying it. She was having a ball <laughs> just while just being Wild in the worst way, I should say. <laughs> not learning anything, getting kicked out of class, getting in trouble every day. And this is in my professional environment. So like I'm mm. out. They I was going to say you were still teaching there. Yes, I'm teaching there. So they would come call my classroom like she did this. She did that. Come downstairs. This is happening. Not and with your mom in the building. Lord of mercy. mama in the building. But it, what I know is that it's not her fault. And that's not to excuse her from behavior, you know, things that are not responsible or respectful, but sometimes it's the environment and not the person in the environment. Because sometimes, like I'll give you an example, this was a school that expects the students to wear uniform, right? Mm -hmm. And part of the uniform is you have to wear black shoes. And 
when I went to the school, it was the same way. And it was even more strict when I was a kid because girls had to wear skirts and we weren't even allowed to wear pants in the wintertime. Mm. So we talked about cold in New York. <laughs> we were in the winter. Girl, putting, no, that's child seven, abuse. Seven pair of tights <laughs> to walk to school. But you know how it is back in the good old days. You know, we walked uphill through the snow. It's child well, abuse. It's like that. But, but you know, like you said, it's child abuse and there's laws and stuff, right? So Technically, in a public school, you can't enforce a uniform. Not, mm. No part of it is enforceable. So, so at some point, kids know that. They know there's nothing that you could do. If they come in school, whatever kind of way, you can't send them home because they're not wearing a certain type of clothes. So the uniform was very um, challenged, I'll say, by the students, mm. including my daughter. So she would get ready for school in the morning. I'd be like, put on your shoes. And she like, you know, make whatever excuse, which is basically nobody cares, mom, like, Everybody with sneakers is no big, and I don't have time. I'm not going to argue with a kid. You get in trouble when you get to school. Let's just let it happen, right? So I remember one day, uh, one of the deans brought her to my classroom while I was teaching. So mind you, I teach ninth grade language arts, which means I got a classroom of about 34, 14 year olds, five times a day. 34. Mm. 34. So the dean brings her to my door and he's like, you know, she's out of uniform she's wearing sneakers now my again i'm teaching so now you're interrupting my whole flow right now and i look and i'm like yeah she has on sneakers and i look back in the classroom about half of the students in my classroom are also wearing sneakers that right? was my first thought go ahead <laughs> they all they all out of uniform like it might be a few who are solidly following the expectation most of them are not so in my mind this is not something we're going to solve right here in my doorway while I have a class like if anything this is an organizational issue that we need to address like strategically mm, not by yes. one kid right now so but they would do that single her out because they expect me to enforce it on my kid and like maybe I'll mm. make it I don't know what the thought process is but it makes no sense right so it's not her fault that she she know, she's looking at me too like I told you we can't do nothing what they're gonna do tell you you know what I mean and it's making it like it actually exacerbates any issues that she has as an individual because my kids are, I never train them to be obedient for the sake of obedience. Like they know mm. you do what makes sense. You express yourself, you ask questions, even with me, which is some people think it's easy like that. Like you just permissive. I'm not permissive. It's hard. Like I have to, I'm the first one that they'll be like, why well, I got to do that? Or what, what sense does that make? Or why? And I'll just speak to them like individuals. So in a school environment, that's not condoned. So if you ask, you know, questions like she's, she's going to ask questions when things don't make sense, especially because she enjoys, and she's told me this, even during the time, I like to see them upset. I like, <laughs> I like, <laughs> I like to get them bent out of shape. And it's especially because people, I think there's a misperception that teachers are somehow some, you know, elite level of human beings. Like if you become a teacher, you automatically smart and a good person. And that's not the case. There's a lot of people who are crazy and they are in positions of power over children. Right. So if you're a child like mine, who she's not going to respect you just because you're older or it's a Mr. Last name, like it's, it doesn't matter. Like you're a person, if you sound stupid, she's, she's gonna, she's <laughs> gonna take advantage of that. And so she would do that. And what I struggle with is that as a, a parent, right? And you know how they say you got to be a village raising the children, but the village mm. has to make sense together too. And like, yeah. so sometimes I would say my child needs things to make sense, right? It, it has to be logical. When you give her an instruction, make it make sense. Otherwise she's going to ask you <laughs> questions to help you make it make sense. And if she's not able to do that, she's going to rebel. So you're actually giving her you're giving her more ground to be disobedient and insubordinate and all these words that y'all say, because you don't make sense. Right. So yeah. she would get in trouble. And, and this is just to explain why I pulled her out of school first. Mm -hmm. Right. So she would get into things like another example, a quick one. Um, oh man, I got so many. I'm trying to pick a good one. <laughs> no, this is good. This is good. I might have to give you two. So, okay. One was she's in a history class. I think it was a history class, but it was an elective. It wasn't like a core. It wasn't like you have to pass this. It's just like a history teacher with a random class that's not in the, the list of stuff you need to take. But, you know, you got to fill up these kids' schedules with something. And this particular teacher, I know personally and professionally, 
is not the most stable individual. And I'm just yeah. saying it real how it is. Like he's a little off and he was not, he did not have curriculum plan. It would just be whatever he felt like talking about that day. He would literally just talk randomly. No, no objective, no activity, just talk. And sometimes he would just bust out of nowhere and be like, we're reading this book right now. Right. So he had one of those situations where he had a book he wants them to read. Not enough copies for the children in the classroom. So they were sharing a book, not a text, oh, wow. a regular sized little book, like a novel book. Mm. And they were sharing it between two desks and the kind of desks that have the little arm rest thing. So it's not like an ideal situation to read a book, but you got this little tiny book. They are supposed to be two of them reading the little book. So my daughter's leaning forward to read and he's like, sit back. And mm. she's like, I'm going to read the book if I'm back here. It's literally a tiny book. I need to be holding it in my hand, but at least I could do is sit up to read it. And he's like, put your back against the chair. Mm. And she's like, I know. For what? Like, how, how do you actually want me to do this physically? Read this book while I'm all the way back here. So it becomes a whole big, now they interrupt in the classroom because she's not just like, okay, let me sit back and read. Like pretend basically that's what you want to do is pretend. But mm. she's not. She's not going along with it. And again, like I said, she actually enjoys this. So she knows that he, <laughs> she's literally playing him just because it's fun. It's nothing else to do. This is boring. It's stupid. And I'm just going to fuck with you. Excuse me, my language, right? So she's like, <laughs> not, like, whatever. So whatever she did ended up making him wild crazy like threw his cup in the air screaming and yelling like you out of line and blah 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 goes send her to the office not only sends her to the office he gets his whole class up lines them up in the hallway marches them down to the main office behind her to go like talk about it with somebody in the office it just so happened with the class girl class So, and, uh, and the way Never. I found out about this, this is crazy, right? This is a whole yeah. class of, they're about 10th grade kids now. This is not even like little kids. These are whole adolescent oh, people who marched gosh. down to the office. So I came into the building at that time because at the time, one of my young ones was still nursing and I used to go on my prep to feed her and come back. So I'm coming back in the building and I hear them paging my daughter to the main office and I see this man march in his classroom across the hallway and I'm like what is going on so you saw it all oh my goodness anyway we had a whole meeting about it he was belligerent in the meeting he's like she's insubordinate she needs to learn how to follow directions and of course I'm like but why are they sharing a book anyway why is it one book for two kids why does it why isn't there a plan to make sure that she has a book so she can actually do what you're asking her to do and sit comfortably and be able to read comfortably so it's stuff like that that I would be like on her side this is what and this is what my colleagues started to say like you're choosing the side of a teenager you're supposed to be on our side and I'm like there's no sides this is a team effort like this is the child when I have an issue with a child in my class it's not my side versus the kid's side it's like let's figure this out right but because it's me you want to make an example of my child and you want to make it like we like something totally different. They won't even allow her to be in the meetings when we talk about her. They would be like, she stays out there. That's not what I do when I have an issue with a student. How is that conducive to the parent, her? Exactly. Yeah, we to all, all have to talk about it. So it was things like that. And, and, you know, lots of other examples, like I said, like, you know, of she's in a class that's ICT. So they have special ed kids and they're stretching a lesson across literally months like a summer assignment they'd be in November still reading this book that she read in the summer so she would like take out work for another class I had one of my colleagues try to snatch a book out her hand that she was writing with and it it caused a tug of war because she you're not about to snatch nothing out my hand who you think you are and then it becomes oh she's insubordinate so basically she wasn't learning anything she was in ego matches with adults on a regular basis. The students also were wild fight, fighting in the hallway. They would pick on her because I'm her mom. And they like, they think you soft, basically. Like, oh, your mom, you live in the suburbs. You got a house. Your mom a teacher. Like, you a punk. Mm. And they would try her. And then she would snap back. And they'd be like, your daughter had a fight. But you, nobody's actually protecting the students. It's, nobody, it's not just my kid. And I had to come to the principal time and time again. Like, one year, the, the year I pulled her out, she had had a fight. And it was like, she had been struggling the whole time. So when she had the fight, you know, I was concerned, but I was also like, why didn't you tell me? Like this girl was, you know, cyberbullying or whatever they call it. And she's like, I had come to y'all before and y'all don't help. 
this and you can't really help me mom I'm like they don't help they don't care they're not gonna you know make the girl leave me alone so I'm gonna have to stand up for myself that's just what it is so I'm like I can't be mad at that but they suspended both girls for like two weeks there was no contact with you know like the, the teachers weren't checking they weren't giving her assignments they weren't mm-hmm. responsive because we all in school we're all just trying to survive so the teachers don't have time to be figuring out when the kids oh, yeah, are girl. suspended Once you get them 10 days girl that's <laughs> it <laughs> yeah so the the even worse part was that there was no form of reconciliation there was no meeting mm, with the parents no mediation of, no yeah. nothing it was just they sent the kids home for a few days and then they came back so she's like at this point I know it's not over. We going to fight again. I said with the same issue. Yeah. Same, yes, same issue. And, and then with other people, with yes, other people too, because now her friends and the other people who is, is just going to escalate. But on top of that, academically, now I'm even more behind. I was already behind and then they kicked me out of school for two weeks. So what's the point? So she was the first one. And my first attempt was, let me put her in the school where I live because it's a better neighborhood. Like it's not the city and, you know, it's a bigger school, but when I put her in there, it was just almost in the opposite direction. So now she's bored to death. It's no excitement. It's they making me swim in the middle of the day. She had a swimming class in between just rent. She'd be like science, swim, math. <laughs> and she's like, I don't even want to swim. Who said I want to swim three days a week? It's cold. They got the doors open. It's literally freezing. I don't want to be wet and go to my next class. Like, just stupid right but this is typical it's not like it's she's she's some special creature like all mm-hmm. these kids are going through the same thing and the part of it is it's like when do we wake up to realize what is, how it, how are the benefits outweighing the negatives and for some of us it's not for us it was like what's the point like at the end of all this it's like hazing almost like you go through all this abuse and at the end, we welcome you into the club. You are high school yeah. graduate. Like, you Here's got that paper. diploma. Yeah, you got that paper, paper right? He Which, made it. And at this point in my life, when all of this was going on, I was I was waking up to the fact that those degrees don't mean anything, right? I went mm-hmm. and got my degrees. I got a master's and I work in this ghetto ass building with roaches <laughs> crawling out the toilet. Like I can't eat. My desk got mouse droppings, not because of me, but because the building is dirty. The It's, it's literally <laughs> ghetto and there are not mouse droppings. I don't know how infested. When I tell you infested, infested, mm. and it's nobody's problem. It's like even the cleaning the classroom is my responsibility. It's not like janitors coming in and clean. They may sweep and mop at the end of the day, but that building is old. It's I am even gonna get into all the details because I'm not trying to like <laughs> spot like that particular school. I'm just saying mm-hmm. New York City school buildings are old. They 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 are dirty. They're not a professional place physically, and then all the other stuff that goes on is also unprofessional. Mm-hmm. So I'm here, you know, thirty something years old. Like, what is actually the point of this diploma? My husband is also a college grad, but he works in um construction field and he makes more money than me. And the, most of the people he work with don't have a degree. It do, you don't need a degree for that kind of work. You just need a technical skill. So once I really weighed the options and I'm like, my child is basically like languishing, not like she's like dying in this and mm. going, sleeping in class. And I'm still, even once I moved her, they would still be calling me because now she's not arguing, but she's sleeping in class. Mm. She's not doing anything. I was she would be like, yes. And, and I would have to leave before her in the morning. So I, you know, I wouldn't even be home because I had to travel down to the city. She wouldn't go sometimes. And so mm. it's like, I was a skipper too. It's boring though. Like, how do you, and not Mm -hmm. only that, like the, what if you're not that kind of person who's like my, my kids, none of them are like morning people, which sure is an affirmation, but we are people who usually up at night. So you got to get on a school bus at six something. Her first class was like 702. She's tired and y'all made her go swimming. (laughs) So right. (laughs) So it just came to a point where I realized it wasn't worth it because I have young kids, you know, she's at this point, she's 21. I have an 18 year old. I have a nine year old. I have a seven year old. So while she's going through all of this, I'm like, I actually have real like children, children that I'm mm-hmm. trying to keep up with. And I have my own career and I have my own stuff and I got chores. I don't have time to be going to the school, talking to these people. So she was the first one that I pulled her out of school. And I'm like, just get a GD at this point. It would be equivalent. Literally, it's an equivalency diploma study. I got her on some online programs to study with. And, and that was the beginning. But um, but by the next year, I had to pull them all out. 
um, because the New York state, they changed the religious exemption to vaccines. And I was, you know, we're one of those families that doesn't participate in that. And my choices were do something that spiritually is illegal to me. Like, it, um, I, like I'm gonna go to hell. That's how I feel like God is going to punish me for doing something that he's already strongly told me not to do or mm -hmm. quit, get fired, mm -hmm. pull them out of school, do whatever you got to do. And that's, that's what started the process. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for it now. In the beginning, it was stressful. It was very, because like I said, like in the beginning, the gra it was gradual to homeschool my first one. I was like, all right, this was my decision over time. It's like, all right, it's not working. Let's just give up. But the other ones, it was literally like, I was still in it, but I had decided to move differently. So like my nine-year-old, she at the time was um, in pre-K. And my husband and I had decided, because again, I'm watching my oldest child and my second one. That's a whole other set of stories of how she didn't do well in school. But as I'm watching them, I'm like, I'm not putting these little kids in these schools. Like, there's no way, no how. <laughs> so I started the process of um, researching independent schools. We found some of the top schools in New York to apply for, which is like a college application process of interviews tours tests it was intense like a few months of intense work and she was she was accepted she was accepted to the our top choice and all the other ones she got waitlisted for because they all communicate and they they wanted her because you know a lot of mm. these institutions they need diversity and when you find one that's like oh she's smart like she scores so and so and come on in we we'll have you so they all wanted her but the top school we chose, um, they offer her $72,000 a year scholarship, K through 12. It was, is a beautiful place. And that's where we were set to go. And that was the same year that they changed the laws. The so religious so exemption, yeah. it was a huge deal, not only because that choice is a, it's a big deal. Like, obviously it's going to affect my kid for the rest of her life. I could be making the wrong choice or whatever, but it was a heavy decision, but it was even heavier because it had to be made publicly when, when we mm. did, it wasn't really a decision. Honestly, like I said, it's like something that is spiritually prohibited. You can't do that. So it's not actually an option. Like I actually cannot go make her get some shots. Like they, we don't, we don't do that. But now having to say no and step away meant now everybody knows <laughs> how we think, you know, everybody knows mm -hmm. who we are, which before is nobody's business. I'm not the kind of person I want to go out and talk about my beliefs or like criticize other people. You do what you do. I do what I do. We don't even have to talk about it. But uh, many of my, you know, colleagues, my family members, they knew the process I had just gone through to get Lauren into the school. So all of a sudden now she's not going. Now they're like, why? Why don't you just let her get a shot? Like, what's the big deal? Are oh, you an anti-vaxxer? Like, oh, and now <laughs> they got labels. <laughs> yeah, they got labeled. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. I can't. <laughs> and then, and then, so again, that was part of the struggle because mm. I'm not that kind of person. I don't care if you disagree, agree. I don't, I'm convicted in, in me and I really don't care. I don't want to talk about it. But now when people come at you and they put labels and they attack you as a person and they call you names and then you have to, you don't have to defend yourself, but of course you'd be like, fuck you. You know, first of all, <laughs> I don't tell you what you're doing is stupid. If you choose, I could personally, yes, I could believe that, but that's my business. This is my path. You have yours and I don't live your life. But at that point I did, I had to justify myself because people literally came and to me. And isn't that weird how that works though? Like how you can be, you cool over in your world, ain't saying nothing about the norm or, you know, the regular standard way of living, ain't saying nothing. But the yep. moment, <laughs> you know, something is highlighted in your world that they disagree with, it's a whole nother like, oh, it's crazy. no, you're wrong. So, you're exactly. wrong. I had to go through that with people I work with. They like, just being nasty people in my mm. family also like you gonna kill them kids my friends even mm. like because there were people didn't really know what I was doing anyway but now they know and they're like oh you one of those like did you know so and so <laughs> they're trying to educate me like if I don't know I made a heavy decision on my own you think I didn't weigh all the options like especially because or do I'm your like, research right this have this was my third child when I when I started to wake up and and notice certain things I'm like nah we're not doing that we're not doing that so I already been I've been a parent but I had friends of mine who were new parents even telling me like you're literally I had a friend say you're gonna kill your baby 
And I was like, you know why they're saying that though? It's not even from anything, any kind of research they've done. And that's what bothers me. It's always hearsay. Somebody told them or what they think, or, you know, just like straight grasping at straws, like nothing concrete, nothing set in stone, nothing that they research. Can't tell you no book. Can't tell you no nothing, (laughs) no study, no nothing. It's just like, what? That's what bothers me. (laughs) That's what bothers me. It's all of that. And and of of course that comes out too when I'm responding because I know they didn't do research. I did the research. I know. And this was a big decision. Like I said, like if, if, if I am endangering my child, I have to bear the weight of that. And you don't yes, think no. I consider that, huh? You you think I just was all willy nilly like, screw what everybody been doing for generations. Like I'm gonna just do something totally different because I'm just a rebel. <laughs> You're right. That's not what it is. And I actually, like I said, I don't like to be noticed. I don't like to be in the spotlight. I don't want to talk about anything really with anybody. So if I made that decision, it's clearly because I'm convicted. I know what I'm up against. I know y'all gonna talk crazy because you're indoctrinated the same way I was. I was the same. I did all that stuff that everybody else did too. I did the vaccines. I did the public school. I was there. I've Mm -hmm. moved off the path. And in the beginning, it was like stages of grief, like, especially because that first year when I, when I pulled them out, I was still working. So I had to leave them home, commute to work, babysit other people's kids and fake teach and then come home and do all the chores and the, (laughs) all the stuff. So it was very stressful. And then I knew I had to get out because obviously that's not sustainable. Like I can't really just have four kids in the house by themselves most of the day, even though, like I said, they would sleep most of the day. <laughs> we not we don't wake up early. So it's not like they were really like home partying every day, but it was tough. And then COVID. So mm-hmm. March, 2020 on that Friday, when we left, it was actually my daughter's birthday. Cause I remember I was like, yes, they gave me a birthday gift. We ain't got to come back next week. I was just, I was just excited to take a break. <laughs> I was just like, I don't care what's happening. I don't care who would, right? what I'm going home. So once, once I was home during those first few weeks, even it was like, it got louder. Like all the stuff that was wrong with the situation mm. was just being amplified. Cause now I'm home. So I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to be. Actually, like my kids is here. We eat and lunch. We going on, we doing stuff, but I'm still stuck in this computer, literally fake teaching mm. because these kids don't turn these cameras on. It doesn't matter what I put on a lesson. Talking to black literally, boxes. Black yeah. boxes with the little letters. They don't even come off on the speaker. Like they don't even answer <laughs> when I'm taking attendance. They literally, I don't even know who's there. I don't know. And, and that, that end of that year, it really... Like for, I had ninth graders who I had just started a lesson on. Mm. <laughs> I just started a lesson on To Kill a Mockingbird <laughs> right before we went out that Friday. So, and I was excited. That's one of my favorite units. So I was like, yes, yes. We into it. So we had like the little pre-reading activities we had just done in school. So now when we went home, I'm like, how are we supposed to read this book now? Like, but I'm, I'm expected to just continue, right? Like they don't have books at home. Sure. We could find like a digital copy, but they already, I had to trick them into being excited about this book <laughs> anyway. You know, like how, how am I going to well, we was in person. Yes. <laughs> and they was trapped. They couldn't go nowhere. Then they right? for 40 minutes, right? <laughs> now they're in their beds playing video games. And all they got to do is just tap a button and pretend. And I was still getting written up for stuff during this time. Like I had a, I had a, <laughs> I had an observation in one of these classes where the administrator, the audacity, she, she literally, let me tell you. I could tell you stories all day, but <laughs> again, like all I feel for all teachers and students all during right. that time, yes, it was a ma'am. very awkward, weird. We all trying to make it work. You have to be empathetic. You have to be flexible. You can't pretend like it's like what we were doing before. It's totally different. So mm-hmm. that's what I was doing and trying to be available because I don't know what these kids are going through in their houses. Yeah. Like a, it's not for me. I was having a great time at home. Me and my kids love being in the house, but there's some families that Home is the last place these kids want to yeah, be. They want to be, yeah. You don't know what you don't know what is happening, right? So I'm just trying to be a human, and I don't. I will have a lesson, and sure, we got English language art stuff on the screen, but I'm in the messages. I'm talking to kids, like I'm literally just mm-hmm. asking, like, "How are you doing?" Like I'm trying to be a person to these people. And yes, ma'am. The one day I had this <laughs> this observation, and um, 
she didn't give me any feedback right away, but like she tried to uh, arrange a meeting with me after. And we kept kind of playing phone tag, but she's like, she really wanted to meet with me for feedback about this lesson. And it was probably two weeks later when we finally got around to meeting and her, her feedback was your lesson plan said that the do not was supposed to be five minutes and you left it on the screen for nine minutes. And that is a waste of instructional time. And she proceeded to use all these trigger keywords from education, you know, like instructional plan. You better hush. ICT, in, integrated co-teaching and all of these terms. And I'm like, miss, you know, and I, and I really had to like, you know, when you just hot sometimes and you just mm -hmm. I feel very insulted as a person professional as a person because I told you my intention is to be human and to connect with these kids fuck this lesson plan like first of all this is all fake these kids are playing they're in their bed some of them are playing some of them are crying some of them are filling the blanks I don't care about this lesson plan you are out of line for even you you followed up with me for two weeks to say that and for to four write, minutes for four, four minutes though right it might not even been four, like whatever it was, like my plan said this many and it was actually a little bit more. And she said, I didn't see any engagement. And I'm like, you can't see a text. You, I was literally, I'm like, I could show you. I was on so-and-so add-on app. You know how they have all these. Like, what engagement are you going to see out of the black boxes? So, so I was livid and that, and that was like the peak for me. That was like the straw that broke the back. Cause I was like, why am I here? Like, why am I talking to this woman? Why? <laughs> but, but, and I'm in my house again. So I'm like in the right place now, but mm -hmm. I'm still, it's still like a tether, you know, it's still like something attaching me to a stupid system. Like, like everything about it is stupid. And I know everybody has their own experiences. So I'm just talking mine because yes, I, you know, I realize sometimes when I, it sounds negative, right? It sounds like I'm saying, fuck the system it is that's exactly what i'm saying and that's <laughs> i don't think it can be fixed i don't, I don't think it can be fixed because i think it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do so how are you going to fix it it's doing the right thing they whoever they is you people could put the right point, whoever it is the government whatever somebody wants us to be disconnected broken out of touch and employable that's what they want so that's my dependent experience. yeah dependent yes. not, not independent so to your original kind of question of like the lifestyle being different I feel like I escaped the plantation like and I know some that's something else that you know I'm sensitive to how people respond to that because I know you, they like you can't be equated to slavery like physical slavery but it, but it is. is it is <laughs> you know and I had to like I don't even know if I want to share this. Well, I used to call people slaves all the time. Like I used to, I used to, I, used to, I don't need any more. Okay. I'm, I'm more empathetic um, because I, it started offending people because I had been doing it for years. Okay. Talk to you later, slave. Like, you know, cause you're going, <laughs> you know, I try to make it a little softer blow generally. Right. A little, right. A little more gentle, but I know, I know, but it it started like it got offensive in 2020 to people. Yeah, like they it did. was hot with me. And so I yeah. had to fall back a little bit. I mean, it is. It is what it is. It's just a different, yeah. it just looks different. Like it that's yeah. that's it. And you know how um the Sojourner Truth is this Sojourner Truth? No, it's Harriet Tubman that they said like if if they would have known they were slaves, you could have free more. Mm -hmm. You would you would free more. That's how I feel like at this point because they then they're, they're not happy you escape. I have they don't when I tell you colleagues who I thought were friends and family of mine, people who came to my house before, they threw a baby shower for me. Like all when you're there, you and the family. If you leave, mm -hmm. it's like leaving a cult. Like you know, you leave a cult, they're not talking to you no more. Like, how dare you? They don't check on me and my kids. They ain't not one person since all of this happened ever reached out to just say hi or like, oh, I, you know, missed you or how are things? Or like, you know, we do a collection when somebody's husband's in the hospital, but I got fired for not following the mandates and ain't nobody sent me one dollar. Like nobody, nobody was concerned about what my family is going to do in this transition period. And again, it's not just us. Like, so it's not about mm. me. There's thousands of other families who found themselves in a similar position and that also amplify what's wrong with the system because if I could give my life right to this bureaucracy and sacrifice 15 years 
day in and day out, no off. I don't care. You know, people think teachers got all these vacations. There's no such thing. It's the, it's one of the most stressful, never ending jobs that is spiritually demoralizing because especially if you're someone who likes to make progress, who actually likes to help and who likes to get things done to have a job That's where you so... never get to finish. Literally you, you can't plan enough ever. You can't, you can't prepare enough. You can never be ready. So if I could give that to this, you know, and I thought I was like helping my community. Like I thought like, oh, you know, they did it for me. Let me go back and help the kids and, and sacrifice time with my children, sacrifice my own sanity. And mm. when it's all said and done, if you don't behave how we say, if you don't conform to something again, like I said, it wasn't a choice for me. And and I, I'm with a lot of people who's like, it's not a choice. You're telling me to jump in a pit of hell or there's no choice for that. I can't do that. So it, it was just um more obvious how little that system that you could give so much to actually cares for you. And it wasn't the first time I saw that because when I, I had my two babies, there wasn't even a maternity leave po policy in New York City mm. for teachers. Knowing most teachers are women of childbearing age, that we didn't have a paid maternity leave. I had to use sick days and borrow and hurry up and go back in six weeks. One of the times I hurried up and went back, they took me off payroll after I was already back teaching. Like I, I had a baby January, came back March, April, they took me off, off the payroll. I didn't get paid that year until July. I was still coming to work every day, not getting paid because it was like, oh, call this office or call this person or check this system. And it looks like somebody terminated you. Oh, I don't know if we have money in the budget to rehire you. I'm like, what do you mean rehire me? I never was not here. Yeah, like, I'm still I'm, here. Like I'm talking, talking to you from my desk. <laughs> I'm literally have been clocking in every day. Go check my time card. And y'all yeah, keep wanting me to come back. I got to pay a toll to get here. I got a mortgage. I need gas. I got kids to feed. So all of this is the same system that people be like, oh, how could you talk bad about the school system? We all went to school. Mm. We're we not fine. We're not even, we're not we're even not fine. fine. Yeah. Most people are sick, depressed, poor, and restricted they're not living the lives that they want they're not even close they're not even on the path and they know it mm -hmm. they know they hate what they're doing and they know it's not right I knew it wasn't right you just don't know what to do sometimes you're just like all right I'll just keep doing this until like God saves me basically and that's what I feel like happened to, to us like I got pushed out I couldn't hide there no more I could mm -hmm. not in. he's like no because I used to be in those faculty meetings where they you know how they talk about all the stuff that don't matter and they just be like, let's change it from objective to aim again. <laughs> so let's be like, why are we talking about this? Like, and I would be in the meetings trying to check my facial expressions because I know I used to be looking like, yo, y'all are sick. Like y'all really, I don't have paper in my classroom. These kids are bad. This this mother just came trying to attack me with a, <laughs> she had a styrofoam cup in the hallway like you the one that failed my son she's about to beat my butt and y'all want y'all here want to talk about what to write on the board what to write on the board you know I had a a principal hit me like that like you talk about your write-up or whatever with your observation killed the lesson just everything everything just kids engaged asking questions everybody you know everything Girl, that man, we had our post meeting. This man said, your objective wasn't written correct up there. And he proceeds to tell me how, girl. Yeah, it's that. It's the micromanaging. It's the you micromanaging and it don't even make a difference. What you're like, actually what are we trying worried to about here? What? what oh, like... You know what I mean? Um, like my husband tells me, what's the Alan Iverson or something? I'd be like, you talking to me about practice? practice? Yeah, that's yeah, how I felt. I'm like, you talking practice? to me about how many minutes my do now was? Like, which wall I put my word wall on. Like, this is what you really want to talk about. That's so what you're talking about. Yeah. I just, I played along for all those years. I was in there, like, sometimes Assimilating. I wouldn't. Assimilating. Like, yeah, sometimes I wouldn't. And, you know, I would say stuff like, again, like arguing with assistant principals or arguing with the guidance counselor about my own kid. So I, that would be the chance I get to be like, no, you're out of line. Actually, you're disrespectful. Stop talking to the kids like that. For, but for the most part, mm. I just, I just, played it cool I just want my check honestly I want to help the kids who I'm able to help you know when my when I'm in my classroom I run it like a human being like if and that's another part too like if we're not even being honest about these kids are in prison like let's let's be for real we don't have we don't even have outdoor space they don't have recess they don't go outside mm. they have a little lunch break where they, you still telling them what to do in the cafeteria you you still on them all day and 
sometimes they're tired. And again, like I said, sometimes you, even when they're in school, you don't know what's happening at home. So I, mm -hmm. I would just be glad that I get to be a little piece of humanity in that environment yes, and just be yes. like, you know, they could come talk to me about whatever. They could come talk on my lunch break. You could come in my, whatever you need to go to the bathroom, go ahead. I don't care that they said you can't use the bathroom in the first seven minutes or the last 12 minutes, these arbitrary rules. And I would get in trouble for stuff like that. Like, you know, so-and-so is just walking the hallway. I think he needs to walk the hallway. I think that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that that's a valid human need. Like he needs to leave the room and have a moment that's acceptable. So like I was blending in in that way where I'm like, at least I get to be here and be like, yeah, I know that teacher is a little off and that doesn't make sense. You know, just to be mm -hmm. an adult, to show them like not all of us are I like that. Like yes. that. Right. Yes. But yeah, at the end of the day, God was like, watch me. Nah. Told yeah. You. Right. He was like, I told you, Lee, watch. They said, take that shot. What you going to do? Even before that, they said, put that mask on your face. What you going to do? And I'm like, guess I can't go because God told me my face comes like this. This is how my face is supposed to be. I'm not, I'm not going to suffocate myself just to work for a B system that I don't want to be a part of anyway. So, that part, all of that. <laughs> so yeah, the lifestyle now is free. Like my daughter's here asking me for grapes. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I do, we do what we want to do on a basic level. Like nobody's telling me, <laughs> nobody's telling us, um, what what to do you know what I mean and I and, and I when to do it how to do it what time to do it how yeah. long to do it yeah yeah um but it's it's just a it's a very free existence it's a new way of life for me even though you know it's been like two and a half years now I, I officially was terminated in like February 2022 so but I have been stopped getting paid since the year before. So technically I've been mm. free. <laughs> I've been free for like two years now. And what I find is that entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Homeschooling is not for everybody. Um, but because you can't, you can't be weak. You can't blame anybody. Like having a job is actually the easy way out. Like sending your kids to school is the easy way out. And there's a price to pay for that. And there's a price to pay for freedom, which is nobody's going to just write me a check every two weeks. Like when I was in the city, don't even matter if you do your job. Well, here's a check, pay your bills. It's no, <laughs> check, <man. laughs> you got to do it. You have to make it happen. Like you have to actually, you know, manifest what you see and, and yes, it's hundred percent responsibility on you. Um, and the kids, I don't know. I find like my, my children, especially now my younger one, I almost have a case study, you know, cause I have the older ones. I did it mm -hmm. your way as society. Like I did, I did that. Look at them kids. My kids are beautiful. However, oh snap, it made me raise my hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is some new, new fancy technology. Right. Uh, and my kids are beautiful. But when I look at my younger ones and I see what difference it is that they get mm. access to real life every day. Like they don't have to have a field trip to go somewhere. They don't have to have like a special occasion to have mom be around or like ask me a question or like eat, for example, like in school, you got to start them kids be starving physically, not <laughs> eating all day too. Like that's another topic. My kids, if you hungry, yes, go eat some grapes. That's fine. That's why I got them. Um, and I just love it. And I also love that it's a lot more of us leaving the system. Like I, I just met a mom yesterday in our homeschool co-op. She's panicking though. Like I was in the beginning. Like I was like, Aww. what is happening? Like, I don't know. Cause it's, it's a new world. And just being able to like tell her, first of all, you made the right decision. Second of all, you're not alone, right? It's a bunch of us here with you. You don't have to feel any kind of way to speak your mind. Nobody's judging you. You don't have to agree. Like it's all good. And she was freaking out because she's like, I'm not a teacher. You're a teacher though. It should be easier for you. And I'm like, no, it doesn't matter. You're their teacher and you are the most qualified. It doesn't matter what degree a person has in a specific topic. Those are your children. You know what they need emotionally. And even if even if you can't teach a topic, you know how easy it is to fix that? You could you could find a resource for everything. So just yes, just feeling like I, I went first, not that I was the first, but you know, in my world, we all the main character, right? I'm the main character. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I went first so that when I meet people like her who are like, I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing. Her sons are 11 and she's like, they hate me right now because they, uh -huh. miss they, but she's in New York too, where the mm. state is 
pressing people to make a choice. And she's like, I, I can't do anything else. I'm like, I understand. But her boys are angry with her. And I'm just feeling like I could be the, the voice of experience to tell her like, they could be upset right now. It's fine. And they need somebody mm -hmm. to be angry at. And you, it's you right now, but you also going to be the comforter. And you, and later on, or maybe not even that later on, you can help them understand more why. And, and yeah. even she was, she, you could tell she was, you know, feeling dysregulated and her mm -hmm. sons were too. So she had her, her twin boys there and they were like, you see that they were angry. You know, you're a teacher. Uh -huh. you, you pick up that, mm -hmm. you, you can sense people's um, energy. And I have been spending most of the time talking to her, but then I made a, made an effort to introduce myself to them and ask them like, so what, you know, what, how are you feeling about this? And, and asking them questions, like, what are you most interested in? What are you good at? How, and, and one of them asked me, but how do I learn? How will I learn? Hmm. And I was able to ask him back, like, well, how do you want to learn? How, how do you learn? And he's like, you know, like he never thought about that. Who thinks about mm -hmm. that? You go to school and I'm like, you know how you go to school, they tell you what to read and what topics yes. to think about and what to write. He's like, yeah, I hate that. I'm like, yeah, well, what are you actually interested in? And getting him to think like, I actually am interested in history. I like writing. You don't even hear kids say anything like that in school because yeah. even if they had an interest in history or writing. The way we do it kills the actual love of learning. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, um, it feels good to be able to encourage them because even though they don't know me, I'm just some random lady they met at a homeschool group that their mom made them go to. <laughs> and they weren't even, they were banging her to leave. Like that's when I, I said, oh, let me intervene. Cause they were banging on the back of her chair while she's talking to let her know, like I'm bored, it's time to go. And I'm like, let's talk about it. What do you want to do? What do you want to learn? Don't you see how it could be exciting? Like I know it's new and it does suck. You're going to miss mm -hmm. your friends. But what if you get to travel with your mom if you want to go to a museum or you get to write about what you want to write about or you get to play basketball with your brother in the middle of the day if you feel like it, but you don't get to see your friends every day. Would it be worth it? And they're like, yeah, I guess. And I could just see at least a little bit of a release mm -hmm. and anxiety. So is that for me, like, like being the one who I had to do it because I had to do it just like a lot of people do, but having the support of my husband to make sure like as we transition into being an employee debt slave, like I was into, you know, actually being an entrepreneur and learning how to change my mindset around being dependent and, you know, the bills are paid. We travel a lot more. The kids are like creating stuff and making friends all over the place. And it's just been a lot of fun and tiring too, but definitely. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, but you're tiring, not you, yeah. not someone else is tiring. Exactly, you know? like I'm telling myself what to do, and it's worth it to mm -hmm. be tired because I know what I'm actually creating. You know, yes. I love that. I love that I for y'all. That is a different lifestyle. I talk all types of shit now. I talk. You know, <laughs> you be. Like, I'll be like, I'm saying what I want now. Like, ain't nobody. I can't get fired no more. So what? right, I'll tell you what it is. Right. Like, school is prison. Even though I still, you know the Instagram <laughs> and the Facebooks, they do put me in prison on there too, but I've been trying to be a little bit more diplomatic, you know? <laughs> Indeed. They make it tough, man. Cause it's like, it's just, it's a lot of blatant in your face stuff that you like, so you just yes. gotta ignore that. You I I can't say on, nothing about that. <laughs> I made a meme on Instagram that said, school is prison, changed my mind. And they, they flagged it and said it was hate speech or hate organization or something like that. And I was like, that's not what that is. <laughs> How? I don't know. And then when, you know, they let you um appeal it. So I appealed it and I'm like, that's not hate speech. Like I said what I said, but they, um they withheld their position. So mm. it'll take little trinkets away. Like for a few months, I couldn't use the thing where you add your photo and, you know, <laughs> so like you, I can't go live on Facebook or my last Instagram got deleted. So, you know, I just try to tiptoe and be like, are they going to? put me in prison today or let me say it in a different way but I'm gonna still say it you know I'm still gonna say the system is a joke and it's it's a game that we've been somehow recruited into that we don't even know the rules mm. of and if we stay scared we stay stuck and we stay slaves and you can do that everybody has their own choice and some of us we have to go it alone and the road 
has thorns and it's not paged <laughs> and there's other people there yeah, though yeah. but we all clear and there it. are other there's plenty of other people there actually like yeah. way more than people really think about exactly especially like entrep- people don't know most successful entrepreneurs homeschool too because how can you how can you send your children to be taught by a system that's not going to teach them to be entrepreneurs school's not going to teach them to be you know, sovereign citizens in their own life, they're going to teach them to get a job like they taught us to do. So yeah, there's plenty of people who live like this, but it's still probably just like five to 10% of the population, maybe less than that, you know? So most people think it's weird, you know, they, they watch mm-hmm. your stuff and they be like, you just let your kids do whatever. Like they just be barefoot outside. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> You mean you don't have a math lesson with a, a a whiteboard on your? We don't have a whiteboard on the wall in here. I mean, we have a chalkboard, but we draw pretty pictures and quotes on it. I don't be like algebra today at nine a.m. Like you could do that if you want to, but I just love the freedom of it. I know I love it too, and it is funny because you know the reception of like when you tell someone, "Oh yeah, we homeschool," and they're like, "Oh really? Like oh." What is that? How, so you have lesson plans? Like, what do you do? And I'm just like, no, nah, you got no lesson plan. <laughs> like, tell you that. I told them we play a lot of games. Right. <laughs> we got a lot of games. Okay. No, you're um, gifted, but your girls have adventures like every single day. Like that. They do. That's that is prime example of real education. Like, get out in the world and experience it, and ask questions and talk to people. Like that. How is that not better than sitting in a classroom, reading books that somebody else told you to read every day? Indeed. Every time someone speaks about socialization or social skills or them not being weird or awkward, I always point to them like, do you feel I'll that way about them? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like they were just over here asking you about because we were just in the mall. We were because before we got here to New York, we were in Virginia and we went to the mall and um, Kenny walked up to this uh, oil uh, kiosk. Mm-hmm. And she's asking about the different oils, smelling the bath bombs, all this stuff, you know, just all this stuff. Yeah. You know? And then eventually me and him start having a conversation, mm-hmm. the owner of it. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, eventually like, oh yeah, well, no, we homeschool. And he was like, oh, like, you know, like, oh, this is- oh my gosh, like, you know, well, how does this and that, this? But then he eventually got to the socialization thing. And I said, do you feel like they lack social? Right. Not at all. Like Exactly. Exactly. Sir, please. <laughs> but I love that too, that, you know, it used to be like homeschool kids were the weird ones because we didn't know. And, and it was so few people doing it. But now there's so many of us and with so many different backgrounds and we don't look like homeschool families. You know what I yeah. mean? Like they expect you to be weird and awkward. Like, no, we're yeah. normal people. Like, like oh, they want you to be, be Mormons or something. I yes, don't know. only weird. Mormons. Only the yeah. Amish homeschool. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, we're all different races, like Jewish, yes. black, Hispanic, everybody, white people. And everybody. people are becoming more and more intrigued about it. So it's really dope because they like, you know, it's like they're meeting somebody. Oh, you doing it? Like, oh, yes. shucks, let's talk about it. And so I, I've been loving having a conversation. Yeah, especially because they also see as a bunch of us teachers who left yes. to homeschool. So that's also raising- I always got to put that out there. Always got to put that, that out there. I know that <laughs> right? your kids, if you don't choose to believe it, but most people don't want to believe it and they're not there nah. to see it. So they they can't, they can't even imagine like, and there's no way for them to know. Like, no. Nah. And they have to, friends, yeah, no, they I have to talk. One, let me tell oh. you real mm-hmm. quick. One time- <laughs> There's a teacher who was across from me and we had, he had a first period class and I was going to the bathroom one morning and I heard him tell this kid, why are you late every day? And he was like, I told you I got to take my little sibling to school. And he was like, that's not your responsibility. That's your parents' responsibility. Your responsibility is to be to school on time every day. And I was like, What's that? that's out of line. Unit. Yeah. Right. Like... That's, that is his responsibility is to do what his parents need him to do for the family. But his parents don't know that that teacher said that to him that day, unless mm-hmm. maybe he went home and told him, but they may not even believe him or have time to hear what he's saying or to even process it or be like, wait, who are you talking to? Like, why, why are you talking to my son? And like he's that? being made to feel bad about helping out his family about First taking on morning. A- yeah first thing in the morning so he got to go through the whole day but you haven't started it by being out of line and annoying because he still has to take his kid his brother to school he's Mm -hmm. still gonna be late tomorrow and you still Mm -hmm. gonna be annoyed for what like it's it makes no sense but 
yeah, the point is just that people don't know what is actually happening in these schools between the mm-hmm. teachers and the kids, between the kids and each other, like all kinds of weird stuff, especially yes, now. Especially oh, girl. You didn't Plenty. have to start that. <laughs> Cause, I, I'm right because i know like yo but did you just see that recent story where the teacher helped her um she helped the student break out of jail like the student broke out of jail and she drove him like out of state no. did you see that no. like he don't broke out like four times or something i don't know something crazy but yeah we, you wouldn't we won't have to start that like you said like mm-hmm. there's, there's plenty going on that people definitely should be questioning should definitely be paying more attention to but they're not yeah. Um, and you, we could blame it on the the rat race. People yep. having to work two, three jobs just to stay mm-hmm. above water, especially mm-hmm. now, gas, mm-hmm. you know, being where it is, and everything else being how it is. So yeah. you can't fault them, and but that's why these conversations are needed, and people have yeah. to know and 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 respect, especially when it's coming from people who have been in the classroom, because yeah. by all means, base things off of your experience in school. Yeah. But honey, things have evolved. Like things yeah. are continually going on. And we weren't yeah. in school during the, the age of social media. We weren't yeah, in school exactly. during the age of iPhones. Like, you know, exactly. like, like yeah. whole different game. Whole different this game whole right now. Movement. Like I just saw a video of a, bo- a boy, a trans girl beating up a, a girl in a middle school. Like, so it's a physical, biological boy beat the crap beat out of a girl. girl in school. And and the response of one of the administrators, like I saw a video and she was mad because people were misgendering the attacker and calling him mm. a boy. So she's like, that's the conversation we need to have. No, it's not. No, it's not. But this is, again, this is what people are subjecting their children to because they don't feel like having tough conversations and they don't feel like saying stuff that might offend people. Like a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl. And that's you could feel how you feel about it but that is what it is but even in the homeschool community it's not like it's it it comes here too because i will say something like that and and i thought i made a homeschool friend (laughs) and she and my messages like how dare you i'm so disappointed and you don't you're a transphobe and all of that and like see this is why it's good because i don't have to be my kids don't have to be around yours if you don't like me and my beliefs you can stay away and we don't have to be in the same environment if we don't want to so choices we all have choices it's yeah. always a pleasure to talk to you it's i not- know and this went by so quickly and it's like i want to keep going but it's like <laughs> no no i already knew that this is i knew that you would come with everything that you came with so and i don't really these. honestly i don't really talk about all of that that much so it's like therapeutic thank you for inviting nice. me <laughs> nice. i know i felt like you needed to release some of that stuff hey beautiful yes, yes. No, it's very, very much needed. Do you want to um, give any emphasis to your, you know, your entrepreneurship, what you do, um, and how to find you? Yeah, follow me on Instagram is about it. Um, Latoya tells the truth and watch me grow because you've been, I've known you for a minute now. So you still watching me grow as an entrepreneur and I'm adapting and, you know, it's a new space for me. So I'm learning new methods and updating my website and just just trying to be um more attractive to the women that I want to serve and that that is it like I want to help other mothers who they may be entrepreneurs or not they may still be in the rat race maybe they're thinking about entrepreneurship um but my goal would be to support them and having a more healthy free life and whatever way that looks like. And and there's a few different ways I do that. But again, if if people are interested in learning more, they could just follow me on Instagram at Latoya Tells the Truth or on Facebook at Latoya Germain. And hopefully they get some value from the things that I share. Indeed. And before I let you go, I need three, um, three, three things that you would tell home, new homeschool families. Relax, number one. I like that. You on the right track. Hmm. I don't know that there needs to be a third one. <laughs> Relax and you on the right track. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's I'm thinking that's what I was telling that lady yesterday. I'm like, just relax. You got this. It's not a big deal. That's the main paperwork. thing. Paperwork. Make sure the paperwork is to the, you know, dot mm-hmm. your I's and cross your T's, but you got this is, is got my this. only message. You're on the right track and we are here to support you. 
I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Um, thank you, Jay. Families, keep keep believing, keep trusting in yourself. And like, ah, homeschool your kids. Homeschool your kids. <laughs> I, I agree. I second that. Thank you. Thank you, Jay.